Okay, uh, I'm going to finish letting people in. Okay. All right. We are live and I will go ahead and start record. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for the City of Philomath's first budget committee meeting of uh, 2022. First, we'll get started. Tonight is February 28th, of, uh, and we are going to first get started with a roll call. Jessica Andrade. Present. Catherine Bisco. Here. Ruth Causey. Here. Matt Lehman. Here. David Lowe. I am here. Teresa Nielsen. Here. Julie Connor. Here. Van Hunsaker. Here. Chris Costello. Present. Candy Cates. Here. Christopher McMorrin. Here. Jeff Shaminsky. Present. Uh, Spencer Irwin is signing on. There he is. You with us, Spencer? Here we go. Hi. <laughs> and, and Chaz Jones? <clears throat> Present. And we have City Manager Chris Workman, um, Finance Director Mike Merzinski, and myself, City Recorder Ruth Post. Excellent. Well, thank you all for being here tonight. Really appreciate all that you're doing. Um, in service to your community. <clears throat> tonight, um, tonight, we have a discussion of the potential uses of ARPA funds. And uh, we're not going to actually take the, we're not going to actually create, oh, I'm sorry, uh, elect a new council or new budget committee president at this point. We are going, or chairperson at this point, we're going to wait till the next meeting. Um, this is just going to continue this conversation. Uh, from last year, distribution of ARPA funds. But first, we're just gonna jump into a staff report. So Chris or Mike, I don't know which of you are going to take this, but I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, I could jump in. I wanna first introduce Mike. I know on the council, everybody's had a chance to <clears throat> meet Mike at a council meeting or at one of the committee meetings we had last week. Uh, but for the rest of the budget committee, uh, Mike, maybe you could just do a quick introduction to say hi to everybody. Let me unmute myself. Uh, good evening, y'all. My name is Mike Brzezinski. I'm the new finance director. Um, I previously was at the city of Newport. And so this is Newport half the size. And but it's got just the same issues as anybody else. And so looking forward to working here. I, I previously worked at Albany, too. So I, I've been around and seen different situations. So hopefully I bring a good... Um, good mix for everybody. So anyway, looking forward to the, the budget committee and the process. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Mike. Half the size, but twice the heart, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're glad to have Mike on board. He brings a lot of experience. Um, for the most part, again, I'll just say uh, the intent is to run our, our budget committee and our budget process pretty similar to how we've done it in years past. And uh, Mike's going to take a look at that. And then if we need to make some tweaks and adjustments along the way, we'll kind of do that in future years. Not to say it'll be exactly like we've done in years past, uh, but that'll kind of be the intent just as we transition a little bit and, and give Mike a little bit more control over um, how he wants to run the budget committee and the budget approval process through uh, next year's budget a little bit. So <clears throat> appreciate that. So let's jump right in. Uh, hey, Chris, hopefully everybody had a chance to read through the memo. Chris, oh, one more thing. Can we just also, I just wanted to welcome um, Van Hunziker, Jeff Schminski, 
<clears throat> and Chris, Christopher McMorrin for uh, joining us. This is their first budget committee meeting and uh, really do appreciate you volunteering to, to serve with us. So anyway, sorry, to, sorry about that, but I do wanna just uh, acknowledge um, three new budget committee members, so thank you. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Sorry, I, we just had a new committee member orientation here at uh, three o'clock and we wrapped up about, what did I give you, about 10 minutes before five for them to have a chance to, to get home and <laughs> get on Zoom. So. Um, fresh in my mind, but yeah, thanks, Mayor Jones. Appreciate that. And do appreciate everybody's volunteering for this committee and look forward to going through uh, the process with everybody this year. Um, so jumping back into the memo again, hopefully everybody had a chance to read through that. Um, tried to be pretty succinct in where I was coming from, from a staff level um, and kind of some high points. I'll just highlight a few things, I guess, that I, I think bear... Uh, pointing out, um, there's kind of two aspects to this. The first is the city needs to be accountable for how we use these funds, right? It's not just a blank check, here you go, do whatever you want with it. We are going to be held accountable and we have to recount back, literally, we have to fill out a report that shows where the funds went, how we, how we use them. And some auditor at some level is going to check the box and say that they looked at it and that we used it for an appropriate expense. Um, as I state in the report, the appropriate, uh, the appropriate expense that I'm recommending that the city use is um, that for essentially lost sector revenue is what it's referred to. And so for, for any city within, this, within the country, if you've got less than 50,000 in population and the allotment that your city or municipality was given was less than, was less than $10 million, you can essentially claim all of it as lost revenue. That's the report that goes back to the federal government is it was lost revenue. It was less than $10 million. We're a city of less than 50,000 people. And they're gonna check the box and say, Philomath has properly accounted for the use of these funds. It was used for lost revenue. That's kind of in your personal income taxes. It's kind of like the standard deduction. You know, you, you don't necessarily have to account for and show the list of all of the individual deductions you've got. The federal government's created a standard deduction for all the municipalities that meet that criteria. We meet that criteria. So that's my recommendation, first and foremost to this committee is that that's how the city would account for the use of these funds. Now, that being said, as I state in the memo, that frees us up to use the funds for anything that the city government would typically use the funds for, right? So that's a lot of things. That's essentially anything that's in the budget is something that the city would usually use municipal funds for. And so we're not tied to have to use the funds for those five or six criteria that are listed and then are talked about in the, the updated um, guidance and, and all of the rules and regulations. This is the city's now money. It's, it's lost revenue money and we can distribute however we want to. But in the spirit of the funds and where they're coming from and, and the purpose that they're intended for, I still went through my memo and made my recommendations according as if we did have to account for it more strictly than what we're going to have to. I just wanted to use that as a starting space for conversation to so that the committee could have an idea of different places that the funds could be used. And then of course, the memo includes my recommendation, which is in addition to some funds for some improvements at City Hall, which will make for future um, uh, hybrid meetings of, of council members being in person, members of the community being able to provide testimony in person or remotely. We need to do some upgrades and I explained those in the memo, but outside of those funds that are directly related to COVID and the need to do remote meetings, the rest of that I feel is appropriate to put towards capital projects and putting it towards capital projects as we'll talk about tonight it means that we don't have to raise utility rates. That affects everybody. It means that we can do projects that are needed now rather than later, which means they're going to be obviously more affordable today than what they're going to be in future years. So there's a lot of kind of built-in equity and a lot of kind of built-in um, best uses and best practices and, and paying for infrastructure. And so that's my recommendation, but I'm open tonight to listen to other ideas that you have, other considerations, um, the, the, the cake is not baked at this point. We're just looking at the ingredients still. So 
Um, with that, I'll, I'll kind of open it up to, um, I guess, two things. One, um, your thoughts on the recommendations from staff for some city hall improvements, some pretty kind of rudimentary basic improvements that need done, the use of the money for infrastructure. And then if you've got any other recommendations outside of those two things, um, if you could put those on the table as well, my hope is by the end of tonight's meeting, that the budget committee has either by consensus or by way of vote, um, given some clear direction to staff on how you would like us to plan on using these funds. Um, because right now, as you know, we're working on um, the capital improvement plan, which includes a lot of the infrastructure costs. And so if there's gonna be dollars of these funds that are gonna be used for infrastructure, we need to have that reflected in the capital improvement plan that the city council is going to eventually adopt and that's going to roll forward into this next year's budget. So as long as we have an idea of, of the direction these funds can be used, that's going to be sufficient for us. We can still go back to the public works committee and have them talk about the different projects, specific projects they want the funds to go to. We don't necessarily have to do that tonight. Um, I listed a bunch of water projects, sewer projects, and park projects. As long as I know that the committee wants X number of dollars or X percentage to go towards infrastructure, then we'll go back to the Public Works Committee and the City Council on how that'll be split up. Again, we don't need to have a committee level. If there's other projects or other things that this committee wants to do, we need to hear from that, hear that from you tonight as well. So again, we can make sure we roll that into either the strategic planning process or into a capital project list, or at the very least, we can roll it out in front of the City Council, get approval and get it into the budget that you'll be seeing here in a few months. So with that, again, I don't wanna read through my report. Everybody's read through that. Hopefully that sets the table enough to be able to open up some dialogue and discussions. So i um, happy to answer your questions or get your feedback at this time. And I'll just ask that if you're interested in speaking up that you can raise your digital hand that's down at the bottom of the screen. Um, that would be most effective for those of you who may not be as familiar with the process. Uh, Van, you have a comment? Well, actually it's a question and it's more from the, cause I wasn't here before. Um, there was discussion about using those funds for community organizations or businesses. And there was reference that that was done the first time around, I assume last year sometime. Can you just briefly talk about what did happen with that? Just to give me a little more background. I can. So it was uh, the, the original round of funding that we got from the federal government. Um, they, they did really rely on the municipalities to be that clearinghouse and to make sure that, one, we were taking care of our own needs for things like latex gloves, um, you know, the, the screens that got put up in a lot of places, hand sanitizer, um, additional hours worked, all that kind of stuff. So there were some funds for that, but it was also heavily pushed that we push that money out to our nonprofit organizations, service organizations, um, our small business community or local businesses. And so we did that. The city council set up two programs, uh, grant programs. Uh, one was a small business grant. I believe we allocated or we distributed $65,000 to the small businesses. Uh, the other was a nonprofit grant program. I don't remember the, that amount off the top of my head. I think it was in the $40,000 range, $47,000 comes to mind, uh, that got distributed to social service organizations. So that those programs, we sent applications out, made it open to everybody. We received applications, reviewed them. I think everybody that applied for funding got funding. That money's gone out. We've accounted for that. And those projects have kind of started and, and sunsetted and ended. That money's the money's already been distributed. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And Councilor Lehman. Thanks. So I have um, three things on my list. Um, having sat in on some previous discussions, understanding that service agencies and small businesses will have an opportunity to apply through the county, I would still like to um, reserve 5% of the ARPA funds for service agencies. I would like to fast track the um, water meter reading tower and also fast track the library expansion planning 
um, using the funds that we have here. And then the rest I think is appropriate to put towards existing infrastructure projects. Thanks. And thank you, Council Damon, for those specific recommendations. Um, <clears throat> Chris, do you wanna, should, do we wanna discuss those ideas now um, or kind of flesh them out a little bit? Um, yeah, I can give a quick response. Um, I'll take them in order. Uh, the five percent of the service agencies, um, there's a lot of cities that are kind of setting that percentage number and, and putting that out there. Corvallis has done similar. Um, the county actually did similar. They set a percentage. Um, I actually included in the memo that that percentage that the county is putting out, um, the nonprofit organizations can apply directly for that funding. The small businesses can't, right? Private businesses can't apply for that funding. So one of the recommendations I made was, you know, the city could apply for funding and, and do like another round of small business grants, for example, if we got those funds, if we don't get the funds, then, then we wouldn't be able to do the program, obviously. Um, I did mention a lot of the nonprofit agencies, they've got other means that they can get access to these ARPA funds other than through the local government um, capital or the local government funds. Um, I'm not opposed to it. I guess I, you know, in talking to some of the nonprofit agencies in town, I don't know that I've heard a lot of requests or that there's a lot of need specifically, um, but I don't want to speak on behalf of them. I guess if a project got set up, I'm sure they would all be happy to take the money, but I guess I'm looking at where the need is greatest. And um, I, again, I'm just not hearing from a lot of the social service organizations that they, they need a lot of money. The exception to that, the, the, the one organization I would say that I have heard from um, in the last couple of weeks has been Mextivity. Um, they've come on as a new nonprofit over the last couple of years. Um, they've applied for and received social service funding that the city provides on an annual basis. Um, they're one of the newer uh, recipients of those funds, and they have expressed interest in meeting with me and talking to me about what additional funds the city could provide to help that nonprofit organization. Uh, but outside of that, I've not been hit up on other by other social service agencies. The, um, I guess that I've worked out, uh, the water meter tower, again, it's a specific project. I can appreciate that. I'd kind of lump that in um, with kind of the rest of the infrastructure, although it sounds like you'd take that as a priority. Um, again, I think we can talk about that at maybe a future date on where that priority should be. To me, that's a, an infrastructure project. And then the library expansion. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a big supporter of that project. In COVID, we lost a little bit of steam on what we were going to hopefully try to do at least look at conceptually what could be done for library expansion. If that's a priority for this committee and for the council, I'm not opposed to that at all. Um, and that's that's in the capital improvement plan. It's a, it's a facility expansion project essentially. So we would capture that in the public works committee's discussion about the capital improvement plan and you know how that would rank and what prioritization that would take. Anybody else have any thoughts on, on Council Damon's ideas? I mean, I would like to know what a water meter tower is. That's a good question. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and again, the expectation would be we'd have a lot of these conversations at that um, Public Works Committee and, and later at the City Council, but the water tower meter is a It'd be a new metering system that would allow the city to read meters remotely. So it'd be a large antenna that could pick up those readings from all of the water towers throughout the city. Um, it saves a lot of staff time, uh, provides an additional level of service, and that if there's a leak or something like that, we would see it right away as opposed to having people have to go out and read the meters on site and bring back the information and go back and forth. So. It's, it's an efficiency and a, an additional level of customer service that we don't typically offer with our additional or with our existing system. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Of uh, Chris, Tiffer. I was just quickly going to say that I've also am a big fan of the um, library expansion or renovation, um, make sure that we fund looking into that more. Thank you. And Chris Costello. 
I I also like um, some fun directives for library planning, and then I have some questions in regards to the water metering. Um, what? How old is our water metering system? Because I know most remote metering systems are not are no longer going with towers. They are doing it either through cell phones or what's known as a leaf in a hub. So I'm, I'm kind of curious how old our system is and are we actually putting something up that is now old technology because it's changing so quickly? Yeah, I think we actually updated the capital improvement plan to say water reading system upgrade because they wanted to leave it open to whatever the new technology or the most current technology was. So yeah, I won't get too fixated on whether it's an antenna or it's bouncing off the cell towers. Um, but the intent is to try to get some, some cost efficiencies and not having to manually go out and read the meters, which right now, again, Kevin fear that the work structure would be a better rate on this. But I think right now it's taken about um, an employee anywhere from two to three days to read meters every month right now. And then plus you've got rereads and leak detections and those types of things in addition to that. So <clears throat> that's the time it would save on the staff time. And then again, the efficiencies would be um, our utility clerk could pull up and look at your water history um, instantaneously and not having to wait for somebody to go out and look at it and bring, it, bring a report back. But yeah, the technology may be different than a, an antenna. Yeah. Thank you. And then I'll just add um, that one thing that, you know, I think about the library, which is a great idea to fund that. And I think about the water meter reader. I think that the library sounds like it's a something that we might be able to find other funding for. But one thing that concerns me is that we have these this existing 1952 era pipe that is a priority for the city and there just are not that many opportunities to fund those types of projects other than taking funds from our residents and our city residents so i really like the idea of investing in those projects that you know nobody really wants to pay for um, to as much as possible on these types of with this type of money but that's just me something I'd like to think about. Um, uh, ben? Well, I, I guess I would comment on that. As, as I recall, when we started these uh, capital improvement plans back in the 90s, uh, and when we finished out a plan for all the different uh, systems, the sewer system was one that we just could not come up with a way to actually replace it all. And uh, so to your point, I, I know for a fact that that's a, an area that even however it's being funded today uh, is still probably underfunded. Yeah. So I would agree with what you're saying there. In the finance and admin committee, they did say it was a, a six million dollars was the estimate to replace all the 1932 era pipe. But um, Councillor Kazi, oops, okay, there we go. Um, I just wanted to say that I support um, the modifications to City Hall to um, allow for. Uh, better transmission of the, uh, the council and city meetings. And particularly where hybrid meetings are the case because it's been extremely problematic to do a hybrid meeting. Um, and I certainly agree that some of the 1952 era pipe should be replaced, but I would also like to see a portion of the funds dedicated to um, our, the, trails, the walking and biking trails in the city in the recent uh, survey that was done by the Parks Advisory Board. That was the number one item on the survey. Um, in the Public Works Committee, I also raised the skateboard park as a possible use of funds, but the mayor seems to believe that 
there are grants available for that as well. And I also wonder if there aren't grants available through the federal infrastructure money for that could be used toward our sewer system. Good questions. Chris, do you know if there's any chance, do you know of anything about the potential for using infrastructure funding for sewer? Yeah, we're all hoping, right? I mean, it's it's still caught up at the federal level. Um, we're, we're hoping that there's, you know, something that gets passed. It'll funnel its way through to the states. Eventually, it'll make its way to Business Oregon, their infrastructure finance authority. And, and we're hoping that there's you know, not only just loan availability, which there currently is now, we could we could go down and get a loan tomorrow for, well, not literally tomorrow, we could apply tomorrow, uh, but we could get a loan for a sewer project from Business Oregon. That's not a problem. It's the grants, right? It's the, the, the money you don't have to pay back. And that's where there's just not a lot of funding. And so, you know, whether this federal funding comes down in the form of loans, loans and grants, mostly grants, None of that's been determined yet. So there's money available, but is it going to be given with an expectation that's revolving? So you're borrowing out and collecting back with interest, or is it really just grant money, one-time funds that are going to go out and help? We just don't know yet. So I'd like to, I'd like to take that kind of like these funds actually and be like, hey, if it comes, great, we can have that discussion about how to best spend them. I'd hate at this point to be relying on those funds for the future, just because they're they're a little up in the air right now still. Um, we're getting closer, but we just don't know what it's going to look like yet. Thank you. And uh, Chris Costella? Uh, yeah, a couple of questions in regards to the sewer. I heard $6 million to replace all of the quote, old sewer lines. Are those all the 1952 lines? Is 1952 our oldest sewer line? Or... Um, I, I'm guessing we've got kind of a plethora of them. So where does that six million bring us to? Yeah, I believe, well, one, I'm not sure about the six million number. That was brought up at a previous meeting. I haven't double checked that or confirmed that with, with Kevin on where we're at on the list. And then, of course, construction prices have varied significantly in the last few months. But um, the 1952 air pipe is our oldest pipe in the ground. It's been our most problematic as far as breaks, um, allowing for a lot of infill and infiltration, um, getting a lot of storm water that's coming in through those pipes. Um, when we get the rain events, we see our treatment um, demand go up significantly, which tells us we have a lot of issues with the older pipes. And we've identified where those areas are. And it's um, primarily in that 1952 era pipe that we just know it just hasn't held up and we've got breaks and cracks and, and areas where it's just missing. So that is the oldest. But uh, to your point, right behind the 52 era pipe, we have other pipe that's, you know, maybe not 70 years old, but it's 65 years old or it's 60 years old. And so yeah. um, one of the steps I will add, one of the steps that the city council has done to address that is several years ago, they identified the need for funds to replace the older pipe. And so they started with transferring, I believe it was $200,000 out of the sewer funds. So that's money that we're collecting from rate payers. And they were able to transfer $200,000 from the sewer fund into the capital project, the land building and equipment fund for future sewer projects. With the thought that $200,000, you know, every three to four years, you're going to be able to do a, you know, $600,000, $800,000 project. Right. Over the years, the city council and the budget committee um, uh, with, with staff's recommendation have continued to increase that dollar amount. This last year, I believe we were able to transfer $450,000 from the sewer fund into that land building equipment fund for future projects. So now you're talking about, you know, a $900,000 project every other year, uh, you know, as opposed to an $800,000 project every four years. So We've been able, because we've been able to keep the sewer rates where we've had them, uh, we've been able to put more and more money towards that land building equipment so that we, we don't get in a situation where we start falling behind and our pipes getting older quicker than we can replace it. So I feel like we're in a good space right now as far as going forward, but we do have some immediate projects right now and we don't have a, you know, a, a huge current balance to, 
to knock those projects out here in the next few years, uh, which is what this some of this funding could help with. <clears throat> Great, thank you. And I assume that leaky pipes mean that we might have dirty, <clears throat> dirty soil and contaminated groundwater as well. Yeah, I mean the the ground itself tends to flow and push that water through, so there's less a matter of contamination of the soil around it, especially in our soils. We're pretty thick clay soil that tends to um, not be real porous. Um, the bigger issue is the cracks and getting the info, you know, getting the that storm water coming through, and then we have to treat all of it. And there's extra costs associated with treating all that water, and then there's capacity issues on how much our current sewer ponds can hold during a season before we can start putting it out on the fields and, and using it to irrigate. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Councillor Andrade. Um, last time we spoke about uh, ARPA funds, I had asked that uh, we, uh, sorry, um, that we advertise to the community about this opportunity to bring their ideas forward. And I was wondering, and, and I was told by uh, Chris that this meeting would be where we would talk about that. Is that still the plan? Because I don't necessarily see it. Um, and I would, I think it's best practice to do something like Cor what Corvallis did where they uh, specifically asked uh, for community input and they came in, community members came in to um, tell the council what it is that they were interested in, uh, in them and in, to add to their budget. Um, and I just, oh, tra um, transparency. I had listened to a lot of the COVID relief uh, webinars and was, they kept going over and over um, with the idea that the way you spend the money should be advertised on the city's website and to, you know, celebrate what it is that, you know, we are using the money for so that in the long run, hopefully we'll have this opportunity again um, and I want to make sure that we will be doing something like that as well. Thank you. And um, could, do you want to talk to the uh, opportunity about for public to um, offer input on this topic? Yeah, I think the first step was to hold this meeting with the budget committee to get your input on, on where you were at. Um, if part of the discussion that we come out of tonight is to open it up to the public and have a, a hearing of some sort and get public input for a percentage of the funds, that's fine. That's direction we can take. Um, you know, the, on the other side of the spectrum of the sentiment is let's use all the money for infrastructure as most as we can. Then there's really not, you know, I, I think in some ways you do the public a disservice if you then open up and say, come tell us all the things you want to do with the money, even though we already know where we want to spend the money. So, if, if the committee is open to spending some of the funds for whatever general members of the public come in and testify they want to use the money for, we could definitely set up a hearing of some sort to do that. At the very least, whatever direction staff gets tonight, we're going to build into, as I said, the capital project list or the capital improvement plan. That's going to have its own um, opportunity for comment and the public can come testify. The budget in itself will have this direction built into it. There's opportunity for the public to come testify at that point as well. Uh, but I think Councilor Andrade's point is kind of the at the initial preliminary level of discussion on what to do to kind of open that up more vaguely, more broadly to the community. Um, I'm not opposed to that if that's something that the committee would feel be helpful. I mean, I thought that I had been asking for it a lot last year. And uh, I mean, this year has been pretty short. And so I'm disappointed that we haven't been able to even have those preliminary discussions as of yet. Uh, because if it is true that we are leaning more towards infrastructure, then as you said, Chris, that means that it's kind of why I ask, um, even though 
community members should always be able to have that opportunity. So um, I, I still vote for people to, you know, come in, uh, come and give us their ideas and to uh, advertise that in a friendly way. Uh, and then also um, thoughts on a website. Thank you. And Councilor Lowe. That was a question. Having trouble unmuting. Um, so I, th what we've talked about in the, in the committee meeting, uh, I think for me, uh, the mission critical part of this would be the sewer pipes and the infrastructure. And that's a big part of what the ARPA funds were given for. I mean, it's, it's written in language uh, for municipal infrastructure. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity to take advantage of those funds, uh, at least the majority of them. Uh, granted, we do have a large number or large dollar amount of fund of sewer pipe that needs to be replaced. And this is not going to do uh, a big percentage of that. But I think, you know, as, as Van said, this has been an issue that's been outstanding for many years and we need to not keep kicking the can down the road uh, where we have an opportunity to at least uh, do something to, to help with these funds. Otherwise it's going to be some other expense that'll be put in the citizens through a, a bond measure or something else. So if we can use funds that are coming from the government for the infrastructure, I think that's appropriate. I also endorse, uh, and we're talking about what, a million 250? Is that right, Chris? 1.25, roughly. 1.25, okay. So um, I think the $30,000 that's suggested for the upgrade for um, the communications and, and the, the city hall meeting room is, is money well spent. I think that really helps to uh, foster uh, inclusion and getting people to hear and see our meetings uh, remotely where it's not very great now. So I think that's a very good inclusive move on that. Um, I definitely support the library too, but um, in the discussions we had at Public Works, the what we're talking about, $30,000 is sort of a design study. And that was actually slated in the facilities improvement plan. So it's somewhat separate from ARPA discussion uh, it's already in, in a sort of a different uh, track. And the discussion there was just sort of moving it ahead, moving it up from another couple of years out to next year. And there's quite a bit of, um, I think, su support and reason for doing that. So essentially, I would endorse the infrastructure sewer pipe as it's shown in the memo in that priority setting where, we, where we're going from one to three, where I think 16th and 17th Street may be wrong. I'm not looking at it, but it's like a million something, uh, whether it's the full million 78 or not. But but I think that's where I would put it. So <laughs> thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you very much. And I'm just gonna, <clears throat> before I call, call on Councilor Bisco, I just wanted to mention that um, I am hoping to hear from folks who aren't, who don't may not always speak up. So uh, I'll hopefully give you an, all, an opportunity to speak up before um, I, I had go back through the list here, but uh, Councilor Bisco. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a, a couple comments, just uh, some of the topics brought up tonight. So Ron Wyden just had a town hall on Saturday and was talking about potential uh, infrastructure dollars that might actually help address some of our sewer pipes. That being said, uh, it is not, right? It's not here until it's here. And I recognize that the 1952 sewer pipes are the first of our challenges, the 1956 follow up with that. And at original expected cost, it was about $17 million worth of infrastructure that was needed to be addressed within the city through the water system master, or excuse me, the sewer system master plan. So just to put it in perspective, this $1.25 million or 1.22, if we decide only to pull away $30,000 is a small portion of what will be needed. So there are bigger discussions to be had on this. What I'd like to encourage this group to consider is that we include in part infrastructure funding. Um, 
I think that's important, but I do also think it's important that we take our fund dollars and we take some of that very external facing and very community oriented. When we look at the dollars of what it might cost to, as Councillor Causey mentioned, um, the bikes and pedestrian trails, which were in fact at the very top of priority. I think that public meeting we had 60% of folks were voting for that as a priority. Um, also, not necessarily funding the skate park, but my understanding is for us to get some of the grants, we need to have a commitment of some dollars from the city itself. So what is 10,000 or $15,000 out of 1.25 million look like when we move, start moving into that space as well. So that other funds and opportunities, maybe more than what we were you know, thinking within the city, you've got an opportunity to do grant funding um, because the city has made a financial commitment um, something else, a couple things that I had on my list were, we've had conversations with the area-wide planning meeting on downtown streetscapes, excuse me, the downtown where we have the lot where the gas station was, some sort of, um, what could that be? How do we engage with the community on, on perhaps what that potential is, whether it's um, food carts, whether it's maker spaces, whether it's a park or a plaza type area, and also 13th Street uh, between Main Street and College. There was also conversation in that meeting about that being a plaza. So those are things very external facing, very community oriented. We can go back and look and say, that's where we put some of those dollars. Is that a place to put some money for feasibility studies? Um, Wayfinding signs is another conversation. I would say that no doubt, I agree that we should open this up for public comment, no guarantees. And I, I think that's true for any city out there that's having the conversations about what ARPA dollars can be spent for, but more voices at the table means more potential ideas. It also allows for the community to participate in this process. And I think that's important. These dollars don't belong to this budget committee. They belong to the city of Philomath and the taxpayers of the city of Philomath. So it seems important to at least allow that opportunity for, for communication. And I would also include perhaps, and again, it's just a small piece. So we could stick $100,000 or 150 or even $200,000 out of 1.25 into a space where we touch on eight or 10 different projects that are coming forward and our community interests um, out of these dollars. Uh, one of the other places I would recommend would be dollars for the Citizen Involvement Advisory Committee, which is part of that process. And it, it, as the council knows, we added that. Um, that number six comes out of the goal one land use planning goal. And I also support um, the library expansion project. And again, perhaps that's just an intent thing that allows us additional opportunity for grant funding, but it doesn't always take much of city dollars that have been committed to such a thing. So where other funders will go, well, look, well, the city is interested in this, this as well, because that's serving a community interest. So I would encourage that we do an open process at, and have that open communication to the city so whether that's a public hearing or whether we brand that as something else. And then I would, I would encourage that we look at all of these other small things that don't really amount to much, but really would make a statement. I don't think they're gonna make or break what we do with our sewer infrastructure. Um, that's a bigger dollar amount that we're gonna to have to acquire and there will potentially be coming infrastructure dollars to support that. And when we look at the bigger picture of what utility rates, for example, we increased last year or SDCs that might be able to contribute to some of this space, a list of a lot of little things that are community focused. Um, skate park being one of those, again, as well, might say a lot about how we choose to spend those dollars and they might really carry a strong message to the community that these things are important to the council as well. Thank you, Councilor Bisco. And uh, Mr. Schminsky. Thank you very much. I'm brand new to this, so forgive me if these questions have already been asked. So I think about the, the pandemic and who it affected, and I guess I'm wondering about you know, funding for children's or school kids, extracurricular activities, uh, you know, sports through PYC, have they been taken care of? Arts, music, uh, skate park could kind of fall into that, um, things along those lines. And then I think about food and food security and what happened uh, during the pandemic. You know, people rushed out to buy all sorts of things, left the, the stores empty. Um, do we have access and availability going forward? Uh, maybe that includes the farmer's market in Philomath, some sort of support there. 
tourism is mentioned in there. I don't know uh, a lot about the Floma tourism, uh, but have we addressed that as far as being affected by this pandemic? And lastly, I'd like to consider, you know, can we put away money or, or somehow think about the future? I mean, we've seen two waves. Uh, they're talking about another wave. What happens in three months if uh, another variant comes along and all of a sudden we're back to where we were, you know, a few months ago? Uh, is there money that can be spent or set aside somehow to prepare, prepare citizens and to offer support for citizens um, along those lines, you know, food security being number one prior, prior probably. So I just have some questions about whether those things have been addressed in, in the past uh, year or not. Thank you. Chris, do you want to talk about some of those things? Yeah, I can touch on a few. There's, there's quite a few. I'm not quite sure on, um, you know, for the schools and the kids. I mean, the, I guess just quickly, I mean, the schools have got a whole separate amount of funding that's coming to them from this, you know, multi-trillion dollar um, uh, ARPA uh, approval. So the, the, the act itself. So um I don't know that I'd look to like give money directly to the schools as much as I love the schools. I've got kids in the schools, but I, I believe they've got separate funding for that purpose. Um, you know, you mentioned PYC, that would be captured if we did some type of social service um, agency funding. I, I know they, you know, had to cut back on sports and everything, but um, the, again, I don't want to put words in people's mouths, but I don't have PYC coming to me saying, Hey, Chris, we could really use some funding if there's anything we can do. That said, I'm sure they wouldn't uh, turn away um, funds that came their way, right? So um, <clears throat> I guess I'll just say that on there. Um, the food security issue and the farmer's market, um, the farmer's market's run by a nonprofit as well currently, uh, Bountiful Backyard. So they could again be captured by some type of a social service fund if that was set up. Um, on the tourism, um, we don't have a lot set up. I can tell you from experience, the Frolic and Rodeo didn't put on a rodeo, didn't have expenses. So they kind of were neutral through the pandemic. Um, and then the, the chamber, you know, is the volunteer kind of hub center for tourism. People coming, not volunteer, for the tourism center, people coming through. Um, and again, I'm sure they take more funds, but I don't know that they could point to kind of a falling off of tourism that's really impacted them as far as what they do as the chamber. Um, I do want to address the, the idea of putting money aside, which I'm always in favor of. Um, with this funding, we do have some hard dates we have to finish. The money's got to be allocated by 2024, and it does need to be spent by 2026. Um, so this isn't money that we can stockpile, say, for a rainy day, and then like a rainy day fund or something. Um, we do need to check our box that says that we've allocated and spent it uh, by the end of fiscal year 2026. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Spencer Irwin. <laughs> Other button next to it. Sorry about that. The doorbell rang right on top of it. So the ring was <laughs> over everything, of course. Um, so uh, I guess just from a, like my own thought standpoint, uh, I align pretty closely with Councillor Bisco's thoughts. Uh, I do think it's important that some of it be public facing and, and supportive. And, and I agree uh, with Councillor Andrade that uh, I, put, I think some of the, what we do should be used to, you know, that we should be celebrating in a public way, what we're doing with the funding, I think. Um, I always feel a little better when I go, oh, look, they told me what they did with the money. Um, even if it, even if we don't end up in a situation where we're asking for direct, uh, like project idea input on what to do with the money. Um, and I, I, I have a memory from, uh, from Citizens Academy where part the, the 52 pipe the 1952 pipes are a big deal. Uh, they also dr pretty drastically increase our water treatment costs because the water gets into the system and we end up treating water that doesn't need to be treated at all. And so that's like uh, where the system should be closed. 
and it's not expensive or it, it ends up making a much more expensive process. And so uh, in some regard, well, it wouldn't be a direct stockpile. It would be directly improving our efficiency in those areas in the future by making those upgrades. If, so like we're not actually saving the money, like physically setting the money aside, but we would be uh, improve, improving our systems to more efficiently use future money, which would be, uh, I think a beneficial use. And while it's not as cool as some of the other options, I think that, uh, you know, getting as modern as possible is really important. Um, and so I don't know, uh, yeah, that's sort of my thought on that. And the, I mean, kind of lastly, I agree with, to some degree, I agree with Chris that like, um, well, for one thing, when we've asked, at least on the committees that I've been a part of for public input, it's been relatively minimal in the first place. And then frequently is a list of like, whatever each person's favorite thing is. And not that there's anything wrong with that. And not that that input isn't wanted and valued. Um, but when we have giant things, these giant projects that the city needs to figure out how to undertake, like it seems a little, it's hard. I'm not, it just, I have a question about how sincerely we could conduct a, a open public forum about like pe people's input. Like I, I'm on the budget committee and it's a little unclear to me exactly what areas the ARPA money can and can't go to and all that. So asking the public to like get up to date on that and then provide meaningful input seems a little patronizing, I guess, to be honest, um, rather than asking our civil and trusted servants to, to do their job. So I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, thank you for letting me have input. Thank you, Mr. Irwin. Really do appreciate the thoughts and the input. Um, and then Christopher? Well, I just wanted to see if Chris wanted, he seemed like he had something to respond. Okay. Um, I guess I just sort of have like a little question and I should start off by saying, I don't mean to make this way more complicated that overall I, um, I agree with most of the, what's been put forward, but just as far as the sewers go, um, I mean, that would have been an expense regardless of if we got this, you know, million and a quarter. So sort of what was our plan to pay for that? Um, if we didn't have this money. Chris? Yeah, so the plan, as I mentioned, was continue to try to put large transfers. So 450, I think this year's budget projected it wouldn't stay up at the 450. I think it dropped it down to 425. Um, was anticipated for fiscal year 2022-23 to be able to put that money forward. And so, you know, if you're putting 450000 even $400,000 a year into the land building equipment fund, then that can build up big enough to, you know, there's an economies of scale. You know, you're not going to do a, you're not going to find a $100,000 sewer project here. Most of these are going to be fairly expensive, but you can't do necessarily a $6 million project either because you're never going to save that much. So what, what the public works director has done is he's broken the 52 era sewer pipe down into smaller projects um, with the expectation that, you know, they'd be around a million to million and a half dollars per project. And so the hope would be that over the course of two or three, you know, years or four years, you'd be able to save enough of that money that you could take on a big sewer project and replace a significant amount of the 52 era pipe, um, you know, every three to four years, depending on which project it was. So there, there is a plan in place to do this. The benefit of using this money towards that is just kind of jump starts that, right? A project that we otherwise wouldn't be able to do um, three years from now, we could do next year, right? And so it gives us a little bit of a jump start um, in getting these projects done. And, and as it was discussed at the Public Works Committee meeting, 
probably the largest priorities there are going to be that 17th and 18th street sewer line where we've got the most infill and infiltration right now um that'd be the that'd be the priority project to get that funded and paid for thanks and chris you had your hand up yeah i wanted to speak um just briefly to to i think to, to spencer's comments and kind of echoing uh councillor bisco this concern or the, the thought about having some of the money be more outward facing there's there's nothing sexy about replacing sewer pipes right i'm the first to admit it. There, there's nothing glamorous or outward facing about that we could throw a party nobody's going to come right other than maybe you all and i'll be there and my staff will be there and we'll celebrate so i i'm, I'm not opposed to the idea of setting some of the money aside if if we feel like that would be appropriate. I, I don't disagree that it would be appropriate to have some money that got set aside. I think that we could put some parameters on exactly what it is that we, you know, what types of requests we would want to get for that type of funding. Uh, if it was specific projects and maybe that opens up as wide as, you know, are there, are there trails projects? Are there downtown projects? Are there, you know, uh, you know, smaller things in the parks that we want to see? You know, is there you know a hundred thousand or one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of projects that we could do that are very much outward facing um, that a committee could review, go through a criteria of some sort, and select some projects that would be identified to use these funds for? I think we could do that. I don't think that'd be overly onerous to do if if it, um, and I think it would serve the the purpose of showing the community that we're using some of these emergency funds that we received for something that's going to be more outward facing that we can celebrate. And then again, the majority of the funds then go into the sewer project that nobody's going to celebrate other than we'll be happy that the rates don't have to come up or we can get a project a little bit quicker uh, that nobody else has wanted to pay for. So I like that idea. I just ran numbers real quick. Uh, Councillor Lehman's original recommendation was 5% uh, to go to social services. Um, 62,500 would be that 5%. And just for perspective, annually, um, the city does about twenty thousand dollars, twenty to twenty-two thousand dollars. That's the um, thirty-five percent of the state revenue sharing that we receive from the state. Um, that's the city's current policy on how much of the state revenue sharing we then contribute to social service funding. That's about twenty thousand dollars a year, um, just for some perspective. So maybe there's some room. And again, I'm not scripting anything or putting out two, but maybe there's some room somewhere between that 62,500 number and the $20,000 we typically give in any given year for social services and maybe a higher number that we could allocate for, um, you know, outward facing, public facing, uh, kind of feel good projects for lack of a better term. I don't know that's probably the best term. There, there are probably some needs in there, but there, there are things that are definitely more outward public facing uh, that could be celebrated. Um, just to throw some more ideas out there for conversation, I guess. Thank you, Chris. And before I take, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna check in with some folks who haven't actually spoken up yet. So, uh, Councilor Nielsen, did you have any thoughts that you would like to share? I'd love to hear them. Um, well, it's been a really interesting meeting and informative as well. And so, I think for me, um, are you able to hear? Is it coming through all right? All right. Um, I agree as far as the infrastructure being necessary, but not actually uh, visually or community purposeful. So the outward facing funds and in looking at the budget and the cost, I do agree with the modifications and improvements for the city council room. I think the technology piece would be far reaching and, and beneficial to our entire community. So that 30,000, yeah, a definite done, um, I think improvement. Um, but I do think that even after the 17th, I was doing some calculation as well, Chris. So the 17th and 18th uh, street improved sewer pipe improvements, that was 1,078,000. If we take that into account and the 30,000, that still leaves us with, you know, more than 10% left, you know, over to actually do some outward facing things, 142,000. So we could, instead of doing a 5% social service type thing, we could allocate something more closer to like 10% that would that would allow us to do some outward facing community involvement, um, social service, uh, all kind of tied up into one bundle to do some good that that would let our community members see that um, 
that we're interested in their input, that we care about the bike trails and the, and the pedestrian trails that they were, and that we care about our town center and we care about possibly funding uh, the library planning expansion. So I think it gives us a little bit of leeway to show um, that we're interested in um, more than just the uh, sewer lines of our community. Thank you, Councillor. And Chris, you want to respond? Yes, two things real quick. Just uh, Councillor Nielsen, on your comments, is your vision for the 10% you mentioned, would that be to combine social service and outward facing that that total would be 10%? That's correct. And is that, would you recommend that over kind of the split between social service funding for nonprofit social service organizations and I then a separate pot of money for outward facing type things? I mean, just you know, I, I, I'm not quite sure exactly as far as I would like to know a little bit more what other, you know, the ARPA funds for nonprofits are there. We just, I just look not comfortable as far as the facility, you know, how easy it is for them to get those ARPA funds as a nonprofit. And so for me committing to, yes, I want to do 5% for a nonprofits or social services. Um, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure there, but what, in my head, I'm thinking that 10% umbrella covers a lot of things. So perhaps um, that would be a conversation for the, for the future. Thank and then you. a second comment real quick, um, just because it's been mentioned a couple times with the, um, the library expansion. I'm just looking at a capital improvement plan. That's on our facilities improvement schedule. It's already a line item there. So, and we've got money that we've been setting aside every year for the last several years. I think we're up to 200 and, where's my number? $268,000 that we've got saved up for a library expansion, which includes the conceptual design, it includes parking lot landscaping, and then it includes HVAC, and it also includes building. So really all we're talking about with that is just moving that data up. We've got it on the current schedule to do it two years out. And I think the conversation has been, let's do that this year rather than waiting two more years. Right. But we can do that even without allocating any of these funds specific for that. We have funding for that. We just be moving it up in the time frame a little bit. So. Um, again, a, a few people have mentioned libraries, so I just wanted to put that out there for everybody. To Thank you. That's, that's a good clarification. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> and I'm going to continue. I'm going to ask um, Candy Cates if she had any comments, because I really would like to hear from you as well. Well, I like Councillor Lowe's ideas. I think social services and the nonprofits have already been funded before. Um, I'm not sure that it's really necessary right now. As Chris said, he hasn't had a bunch come forward to say they needed it. Um, it sounds to me like they've been well taken care of. Um, I think the sewer project is something that the city really needs. So I'm all for it. Great, thank you. Um, Chris Costella, haven't heard much from you tonight. Well, just a couple of questions. I understand sewer projects are not sexy, but well needed. I would love to see the 1718, the little over one point um, million dollars, that one be taken care of. Um, and I understood from Chris's comment, Chris Workman's comment that we've got 400 and some odd thousand that we've put over to, um, in the budget for this year. So those could move up and we could do the 16th and 11th street, but that would still leave us, you know, a chunk of money to do. And I like Catherine's um, idea of a little bit of outfacing projects uh, and sit on trails on some seed money for the skate park or the library planning, moving that up. And if Chris says we've got money and we can just move it up, then I'm, I'm good for that. I think those type of small multiple projects, feeding them a little bit of money really helps with uh, hitting a lot of people uh, in the city of Columbus that that they can see the money being spent. And so I really like that. I, I'm not a big fan of 
needing to have a bunch of meetings and asking people's input. Uh, this is an open meeting. People could be here, could be commenting on this meeting, uh, planning committee. I, I mean, there's all kinds of avenues for folks to talk about what they would like to spend money on. So I'm, I'm not a fan of dragging this out. I think let's get on the program and let's just get some money allocated and uh, like those particular ways for what it's worth. Thank you very much, Chris. Appreciate your thoughts. And next up, I have Julie Connor, who has not yet been heard from. So hi, Julie, do you have any thoughts? I would like to echo what I've heard a lot of people say. I I hate buying new tires for my car, but they need to be bought maintenance. So the sewer stuff ever since I was in Citizens Academy years ago to just getting rid of the 1952 pipes as soon as possible, I think is important. So I'm supportive of that. I also really like the idea of doing something in the city center, you know, with some of the extra. Um, I love that idea of that. I believe it's the 13th in Maine we've been talking about with the cityscape that um, that speaks to my heart. I think that would be wonderful. And trails definitely piques my interest as well. So, and I agree with that the city hall um, upgrading and stuff to keep meetings like this flowing well. Those are um, those are the things that I would like to put support behind. A lot of good discussion, a lot of good ideas, but those are the things that speak to me the most. Perfect. <clears throat> now I think I've heard from everyone on the Zoom, so I'd like that a lot. Uh, Mr. Hunziker, you had your hand up for quite a while now. Well, I, there has been a lot of good uh, comments and, and I, I like them all. Uh, the, I guess what I would suggest that we do is, and I, it seems like there might be a consensus for that, uh, to do that project, the, the sewer, the 17th, 18th, the one point oh seven eight million dollar project do the thirty thousand dollars for this uh, city hall uh, upgrade to the system which does leave one hundred forty two thousand dollars and what i would suggest we do with that is to allow citizen input is that we take these ideas there's i don't know i've tried to keep track of writing them all down but there's at least six or eight of them that I've heard more than once or twice and maybe put them in the city newsletter and ask the public for their input and the council at a, whatever future date that would be is take that input and make a decision then of what to do with that $142,000. So that, that would be my suggestion. <clears throat> Thank you, Van, appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I appreciate the specific suggestion. Um, Councilor Bisco. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and thank you for the other comments that have been added here. It's a nice perspective to hear from everyone. And um, Van, also thank you for a, a different alternative way for community involvement, which would reduce our need to have a separate meeting. Um, it would allow that public engagement process and also give somewhat of a guidelines that we can work within. So I just want to point out that I appreciate that. Uh, I just in listing out what was being talked about. So including even the city hall dollars, um, if we did skate park at $15,000, which shows intent and allows funding also trails at $15,000 shows intent and allows for outside funding some money put towards a town square. I, I would like to recommend that we do support the farmer's market. So we could put $10,000 towards the farmer's market. These are just hypotheticals, but I'm just gonna to get to the end dollars in a moment here. We could give $5,000 to the planning commission to work with the citizen involvement advisory committee and really stand that up strong. And uh, that falls into compliance with those requirements. And then um, downtown conversations, whether it's wayfaring, whether it's just surveys on what the downtown square would like to be or that plaza on 13th street, all of that actually comes in under $90,000 if we are just putting a little bit out into those spaces. So it allows activity to happen and it shows intent from the city. 
So I would like to, to encourage that we go that route. Um, sticking those other dollars into infrastructure does make sense and it's gonna take a, a piece of that project um, out of our budget and coming from these dollars, which will be nice. I would also like us to consider that tourism picture. So whether it's it's we put together, we've talked about some different ad hoc committees. So whether it's an ad hoc committee on tourism or that connects with small business and tourism or works in collaboration with the chamber, there's opportunity to put dollars into a different space there as well. But I do like the idea that we're looking at a more broader and diverse use of these funds uh, as well. Thank you. Councillor Lowe. Very excellent, excellent. Well, I think we've got one, two here. I, I really like what Ben said and how he broke it down. And Councillor Bisco, I really like your ideas too. I think those are very good. Um, but I, there is one thing we have, haven't brought up in this meeting, and I think I'd like us to think about it. Um, and that's uh, affordable housing and anything that we could put money to that might help um, in that regard. Uh, I think that's part of the ARPA. Uh, money purpose. I know uh, Dan himself was involved in the uh, Paloma Family Housing Stability Fund a few years ago, and uh, there was still there's a need. So I'm not sure personally just how much um, houselessness we have or homelessness in the community, but you know, with uh, the the Mill Pond development now with the changes there and partnering with Habitat, maybe there's something, maybe there's an opportunity where the city can partner with Habitat or have some sort of tangible effort to uh, put forward that some money could go to from this uh, source that could uh, demonstrate that we're serious about this, uh, about housing and making homes affordable. So I'd like to, and I'm just putting it out there, I don't have anything more than that, but some portion of this money uh, going to that and we did in the finance and admin committee we did talk about the opportunity of applying for the benton county arpa mm -hmm. funds to consider possibly hosting or having a revolving down payment loan program for housing but um yeah. and, and that's something i don't think has been brought up with this committee i mean i'm not sure how many people know about that and i think that's another element somewhat different than this but maybe chris wants to talk about it sure chris yeah and i didn't mention that in my introduction it is in the memo a little bit where i talked about the um oh what's it addressed as here the well, i'm not going to find it right off the top of my head but um you know addressing negative economic impact caused by the public health emergency benton county Kind of like what we're talking benton county has set aside a certain amount of their funding that they're not going to use for infrastructure that they want to use it for kind of the social service funding and they've invited the city and all the cities in the county um, and nonprofits to apply for the funding to then be used for any of those five kind of key areas that i cover in the memo and uh, so one of the conversations we had at the the finance committee <clears throat> of the city council was could we apply for that funding? And then if we apply for that funding, can we identify maybe one or two targets that that money could be used for? And that was one of the ideas brought up was if we started some type of a, re, a you know, wrote a, a revolving loan or a revolving grant type program for affordable housing that could help like a down payment assistance program or something like that, where you could get the funds out there and then have no interest and just collect the funds back and, and have that going. If we apply for that funding through Benton County and we receive it, then great, we can run that program. But if we don't get the money from Benton County, then it's a, an additional program we wouldn't be able to do. Or it's a program we could look at doing at some point in the future. So again, I don't wanna feel like we've got to spend every penny here. Um, other jurisdictions, <clears throat> uh, they've allocated out you know half of their funds and kept the other half for future discussions. Um, we're not getting quite that large of a sum where we're going to have a hard time spending this money. Obviously, pretty easy to come up with a lot of places to spend it. Um, but that is something we could look at. Um, that could be part of the 10,000 or the 10 percent could come out of there. It could be in addition to that. Um, but that is an opportunity. And again, that's a conversation if the 
if this committee wants to give some more direction there, we can talk about that. Or the intent was to, <clears throat> to go ahead and apply for, well, we talked about timing on that, right? So actually it is good that this came up. The due date on that is March 11th. Is that right, Councilor Lowe? Um, so it would be get, uh, you know, I think we should apply for some funding. It's there and it's available. It might be helpful. I don't want to pause the discussion we're currently having, but it might be helpful this evening to just put some side time aside to give some direction to staff on what we would like to apply for for the Benton County funding. That may be seen as more like optional funding or like the cherry and the whipped cream on top, right? Like if we get it, great. If we don't get it, that's okay. We're not necessarily relying on it. Um, so again, uh, Mayor Jones, I don't know if you want to put a pin in the current discussion and have the discussion about Benton County, County funds, or you want to take the rest of the hands or up on the current topic, then maybe we can come back to the Benton County um, funds that are available. Yeah, I'm hoping that we can uh, finish up this conversation in the next 10 or 12 minutes with the three hands that are up and then kind of come to a consensus. And then we can uh, continue the other conversation. Okay. Uh, Councilor Kazi. Thank you. Um, I would just echo what Ben suggested, prioritizing the 17th and 18th and um, the um, improvements to the council chambers. I'm also wondering if we could conduct a simple online survey for of our residents to get their to get their input and priorities on projects for the remaining funds. Um, perhaps it would give us a better sense of what their priority priorities are and where we might want to put more money rather than less. Um, so that would be my suggestion if we can do something like Survey Monkey with a paper version available in City Hall. So maybe list the, the seven different other projects that's been that have been discussed. Yes, and I also wanted to mention that in the capital improvement plan, there is $25 for the skate park, skate park feasibility study. So I believe that's already funded as well. Thank you. And Chris? Yeah, just response. The, um, oh, I got sidetracked with the skate park. Um, what was the topic right before skate park? Sorry. The survey. The survey. <laughs> thank you. So as I mentioned, if this committee, if the consensus tonight is X amount of dollars or X percentage to go towards, you know, community projects, outward facing projects, social service, whatever the category is going to be, we have time to come back. We can, we could collect some input. We could put a survey out. You know, we've got plenty of time to do that. What I, what we really need tonight is how much of this money needs to go to the infrastructure piece because that needs to start getting put into the, into the, into the budget, right? Into the capital project list and the budget. Um, so we, we don't necessarily need to decide. I know several projects have been listed today. I'd hate to limit the discussion. If we are going to open funds up for the community, which I would support, um, I don't know that we'd want to limit it to just ideas that come up tonight. I think you, you do a broader reach, um, take some more information, ask for requests, then based on what comes in, that could help generate your survey, and then you can kind of rank those projects. Um, but again, we've got some time to do that portion of it. Um, we don't have to necessarily decide how to do that tonight. Okay, great. Thank you. And Mr. McMorin. Yeah, I mean, I, I think when I raised my hand, I had more thoughts, but since then, most of them have already been said. So um, I'll keep it quick, which is, yeah, I, I fully support the um, the idea to fund the, the one sewer project as well as the city hall improvements and then um, sort of leave the rest open to um, hearing from the community. And I guess I just sort of, Again, I think this has been talked about, but just sort of what our options are with that. Um, like if we do a survey or we do some sort of outreach, then would that come back to this committee? Would that go to city council? How would then we sort of take that information and act on it? Chris? I think go, I think go either way. Um, you know, if there's a kind of, trying to see the future a little bit in the crystal ball. If we open it up for 
the public to submit ideas. Again, trying to save a public meeting that's going to be hard for people that sometimes attend anyway. But if you leave it more open, just ask for suggestions. Those are collected. Then we run the survey, kind of ask people to rank those or give input on those suggestions. Um, that could come back to this committee. This committee is going to be pretty busy going through the budget and get all that. And those meetings tend to run a little bit long and be pretty tight. So really, if that went to the city council and the city council had a meeting, looked through those, the council could hold, you know, public comment or public hearing during a regular council meeting. If somebody wanted to come advocate for one or another use, um, that seems like an appropriate place to come and address the city council and the council give some direction. I envisioned it would roll into kind of the strategic plan or, or, or something going forward. If it's something that needs to happen this year, um, then yeah, that would need to get into the budget fairly soon. So I guess I'm a little bit open. I, I'm a little concerned about it coming back to this body just because this body is not necessarily going to meet again. But if it was, yeah, I'm a little concerned about the timing of it coming back to this entire body. It may be simpler to go to the council for an approval. Great. Thank you, Chris. And Council Layman, you're up. Yeah, a couple of questions. First, is, are we getting all of the money at once or are we having to wait for the second installment? I guess that was the original plan, but I don't know if that still holds true. So like if we allocated the funds for a project this summer, would we have the money to spend for this summer? Um, we would. So we've received half the funds. So we have half the funds sitting in the local government investment pool. So half the funds received, the others we'll, we will receive this, this next year. Um, we, we have funds, if you look at the capital improvement plan, which I know you've not had a chance to see yet. We've got, <clears throat> we have funds in the sewer fund to do a project. 17th and 18th street aren't gonna be ready to go this summer. We can start engineering those, if they get bumped forward. We could start the engineering process and pay for engineering and then construction would be next summer. Um, but really that still bumps it up um, and allows for additional funds to be done. We're really talking about year three and year four on additional projects that need to be done. So the, the reason I'm asking that is um, I'm a little bit, more than a little bit concerned about the way inflation's going and with stuff that's happening in the international scene that I would wholeheartedly suggest that we spend this money as quickly as possible because that money is going to be worth a heck of a lot more in 2022 than it's going to be in 2026. So um, that that was the motivation for the question. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. And again, I think as we look at the capital improvement plan with the Public Works Committee and then later with the City Council, that'll become really evident there, right? There's enough projects in the sewer capital improvement plan that we will spend that money down within the next three years. Great, thank you. So to me, it sounds like we are converging on consensus. There's some people who are fully in support of throwing all the money at very unsexy projects, and then there's more who wanna do a more of an outward facing or some aspect of an outward facing, but it sounds like there's a large consensus of folks who are interested in doing the 17th and 18th street project um, and then some balance uh, spread out amongst other projects um, that maybe we can do a community engagement process of some sort, a survey, collect some information, have a public hearing on that at some point or an opportunity for public to at least provide input before we go back to the council. <clears throat> Does that generally seem like people are in support of that? Um, or is anybody strongly opposed? Well, also the city council. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Councilor Lowe, you have, hand, you have your hand up because you're opposed or you wanted to? You can go ahead and unmute. Just to clarify, Mayor, um, what what what's the consensus maybe on the uh, communications in the city hall? I know I've heard favor, but I'm not sure if we how we feel about that. Yeah, I guess I felt like that was pretty strong consensus for that moving okay. forward. 
Anybody strongly opposed to not doing city hall improvements? Okay, great, thanks. Councilor Bisco, you had your hand up. Not opposed, I just wanted to ask a question. Will we be getting some design looks at what that might look like and having some weigh in on what that upgrade will be? I mean, if we're talking about changing the, the Diaz, that's not just technology. So that's a change in, in how the city hall chambers will look. I was just gonna give a blank piece of paper to Kevin Fear and let him design something. Uh, see what we come up with. Uh, and no, we, uh, all, all joking aside, um, we need to know if we have a pretty good idea on the technology side. Um, we've already been looking at sound system upgrades, camera upgrades, as far as layout and dais. Yeah, we'll bring that back to the city council and then get some feedback for sure. So, Chris, do we need to have a motion made and vote, or do we just move forward with consensus? It sounds like we have a pretty strong consensus for the 1718 project streets project and the uh, city hall with a survey. I think the consensus is good if we ask for a minute that's strongly opposed. I, maybe just a little bit more clarity on the dollar amount that we're talking about. Um, are we talking the straight numbers from the 16th, 17th as I have it listed in the memo? Um, gotta get to it again, the 1.078. And gotcha. then the city hall at the 30,000, and then the balance of that would be outward facing to be determined. Or just to be determined by the survey. I mean, we can just talk amongst folks and then make a decision after we hear it back. Okay. Um, even if that survey results in following through with 16th Street and 11th Street sewer projects. Yeah, just that's what I think. Uh, Mr. Schminsky. Thank you. I just want to state that I don't feel comfortable spending the majority of the money <clears throat> on a sewer project that definitely needs to be done. Don't get me wrong. I, I support that. But uh, this money was was set aside because of pandemic and things that are affected by the pandemic. So I'm just going to state that I'm not comfortable setting aside uh, such a large amount, the majority of the amount of this money for such an infrastructure project. <clears throat> Chris, um, when I first saw the announcement of the money, it was specifically stated for water infrastructure is one of the major priorities for this funding. Isn't that correct? It's yeah, it's one of the, it's in the list of really it was five and it was lumped as water, sewer and broadband infrastructure was one of the targeted areas that this money was for. So I, you know, the, there's a, I think on the, um, on the bottom of the memo, I, I provided a few links to some additional reading that was available. And if you look at, um, a lot of those, especially on what current cities have already allocated funds towards, a lot of money is going for infrastructure. That was one of the intents when this was passed and the intentions, and that's what a lot of cities are doing. So we are, we would not be out of line in, in using a, the majority of the funds or a large chunk of the funds for infrastructure. That's very much in line with this program. Right, and, and I'll just mention, Jeff, that when I first saw the announcement of the money um, and I think that even with city staff, because it was so heavily focused on water infrastructure, I think that's exactly where our minds went as um, these are strong, solid needs in the city. And so they were listed as a major emphasis for the, for the purpose of the funding. So I think that's one reason that we've kind of ended up here, but Councilor Andrade. I completely agree with Jeff on this. I would feel much more comfortable only allocating a part of this uh, funding, the much less part of this funding to that project, especially because, as I stated before, I listened to a lot of webinars through the National League of Cities on these, this funding and, uh, and smaller ones that talked about um, how to spend the money. And the thing I heard every single time was, yes, use this to like backfill and such, but we want this to be an opportunity for you to, for the cities to uh, do something unique, di or not necessarily unique, but different to, to reimagine what community areas could be like. And we don't really have a community spot, in my opinion, uh, 
we have ideas of where to have them. And I would, I, in that spirit, I think that we should allocate more of that money towards the other community projects. Thank you. And Christopher? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm, if you've ever been in a meeting with me before, you know I'm a huge fan of um, having more community areas. And I think, as I said once, tearing up 13th Street. Um, <laughs> but I think my only concern with that is that that's something I want us to be really intentional about. And to, you know, I know that everyone hates how government takes a long time to do things, but um, just since this is ARPA money and it does need to be spent and allocated in the next year or two, um, I guess my concern with that is that we might not be able to do something that justifies the community in that time period. Um, and I, I also think that, you know, if we have like $200,000 to put towards community facing stuff, even though that's a, not, not a majority of the costs, but it is a significant portion. I think that those type of outward facing things can have a huge return on investment. You know, you can spend a million dollars on a new sewer pipe. It's super important. No one will notice it. Whereas you can spend $20,000 on, you know, a new trail between two parks and everyone will notice it and really appreciate it. Um, and that's a fraction of the bigger costs. So I, I do think that that amount of money can have a big impact for our community in creating new spaces and everything. Um, so I, again, I'm all in favor of, you know, looking at the 13th street renovations and looking at that city parcel downtown. Um, I just don't necessarily think that that um, should always be a part of this particular discussion. I just wanted to say that since we were all saying things. Great, thank you. So um, having heard that, I'm just gonna have you, if, if anyone is strongly opposed, um, so I hear from Jeff and Jessica that they possibly are. If you're strongly opposed, just raise your hand, um, your virtual hand um, right now, and then we'll just at least be able to move forward. Mayor, could you clarify what we're strongly opposed or not opposed to, please? To the statement of consensus that I had referred to earlier, uh, that we would like to retain in the uh, plan funding to one point uh, 078 million or no? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for 17th and 18th Street plus 30,000 for the City Hall renovation and with the remainder uh, to yet be determined by some sort of community engagement process. Can I ask a clarification question then? Sure. So 1.078 and $30,000 will bring us up over. $1.1 million, that's going to leave us less than $150,000, like 130 something. 142. Just, thank you. Just hip shot. Um, I did think that you also mentioned the idea of waiting to make that determination until we get the feedback that's been talked about. Yep. So I'm not so, so you're asking for a consensus, but you'd also suggested another alternative. I think I would be more comfortable if we got that feedback and a consensus. And also that list kind of a breakdown of what those extra dollars would be, because it seems like we're cutting those extra dollars pretty close. And not only that, the $1,078,000, that's a very subjective number. Like it could be more than that. It could be less than that. And, and knowing that construction is likely to be that way, are we better off to just pull back to a flat 1 million, for example, and leave us a little more space for some of this other community pointing funding. But I think we'd be better if we got that community input before we came to some consensus. Well, I think the idea that <clears throat> for this meeting was to come to some sort of give some guidance to staff. Um, if we wanted, I, I don't, I didn't hear consensus about just opening the entire amount up for uh, community engagement and for a discussion. I was hearing consensus about the idea of specifying some dollar amount, which is according to Van, $142,000. And right. uh, so asking for input on um, how that might be best spent. Um, am I missing something? No. Um, so, uh, and I, Jeff and Jessica, I, I asked you to raise your hands just to um, vote. 
Uh, now I'm going to go ask you to lower your hands, but if I'm just going to ask you to lower your hands for a second. And then um, if I have consensus, if, if you are in support of this idea, please raise your hand. If you're not, that is fine. Wait, and the, the idea that... I'm going to state it. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Mayor so, Jones, Mayor Jones, can I recommend you go and just call for a motion and let's go and get a motion on the table and then we can have discussion and take a vote on it. Okay, I will make a motion myself. So I move that the city from the ARPA funds set aside $1,078,000 for the 17th and 18th Street projects described in the memo, plus an additional $30,000 for city council room improvements with the remainder being used for projects that are identified through a public engagement process. So, Second. so I have a motion and I have a second by count uh, by Van Hunziker. Um, any further discussion? Councilor Andrade has her hand up. Uh, Councilor Andrade. Uh, I appreciate wanting to, uh, you know, fund this entire project and and such, I, I honestly really don't feel comfortable um, not going to the people first, the community. I think that it is important to do that. And, and if, we, if we do go forward with this um, proposal, I ask that we are um, advertised, promote this heavily so that people will know uh, that they should tell the tell ci the city, the council ahead of time whether or not they support it and if they have any other ideas as to how to use the money because it just, I, I always say, I, I never knew about city council meetings. Like I never paid attention to that growing up. And it was only until I paid my own water bill that I, you know, got these newsletters and got interested in city business and I'm now a city councilor. So I, I just think that if we improve that idea of, of the, that we're looking for feedback from this idea, um, that that would be very helpful. And thank you. So um, all in favor of uh, moving forward with the motion as stated, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All opposed, aye. raise your hand and say nay. Aye. If you, um, we might have to lower hands. Spencer, <laughs> and and in right. the Ask for the nay votes again, if you would, Mayor, so we can get a good count. All opposed, please raise your hand. Uh, Council Andrade, oh, she has her hand up in. So um, motion carries. Um, Mayor, um, oh, okay, I, I'm sorry. I just noticed that Jeff used his virtual hand. So thank you, I was trying to find him. No, no problem. Okay, so motion carries. Um, so Chris, let's talk, talk briefly. Hopefully we can finish up in 20 minutes. Um, uh, the conversation about Benton County. Yeah, so- And we did lose yeah, a council layman. He had to drop off. Okay. Um, so again, this could go real sideways real quick, but um, again, I would, I would recommend that we apply for some of the funding. It's money that would come from Benton County. Um, similar to us, they've allocated some funds to stay within to work on infrastructure and some funds to go towards um, social service and other funding for municipalities and to support the rest of the community. So we can apply for these funds. I don't know what the normal dollar amount's going to be, right? I think, you know, in my mind, I'm in that 
50, you know, maybe 30 to hundred thousand dollars at the high end is what I have. That's just intuitive, I guess. Um, but, and again, I would recommend that it's a project or maybe two projects. And so maybe just throw out a couple of quick recommendations, either things we've talked about this evening that sound like we definitely wanna apply for, and if we can get it, great. And if not, maybe we can look at it with our own funds or maybe just not do it. Um, that's probably the easiest place to start and just be, let's get a couple of recommendations on the table. Um, staff will do the lifting, right? I'm more than happy to apply for the grant, do the write-up, get that submitted. I imagine these are going to be fairly competitive. Um, there was some discussion about uh, the, the um, well, I guess I'm going to give you a little bit of background. One of the, the, the only other group that I know that's looking to apply for this is either the, the real rural economic development, which is rural cities in Lynn and Benton County that have pooled together. Either that group is going to apply for some money to do some type of a small government or small business assistance program, or Benton County Economic Development is looking to pool a, a larger group of, res, or of um, communities that might apply for a grant that they could then use for small business assistance as well. So it sounds like there's at least one of two other efforts that are going to be made for our area for small business assistance of some sort. Outside of that, I really don't have any insight into the grant funding preferences other than what's been provided in the request um, for uh, the request for requests, uh, which is again just those four or five stated items that I listed and provided for you. Um, so are there specific um, topics that anybody wants to put on the table for consideration to apply for to Benton County? Yeah, and, I, and I'm just going to mention just for everybody's benefit that uh, during during the Finance and Admin Committee meeting that we did note that social service agencies could fund could apply for funding from this source. And the city has already started publicizing uh, that opportunity um, encouraging social the social service agencies to apply for funding from Benton County. So that is being done already, uh, just to uh, catch that. And then I would just throw on the table, um, I love the idea of the revolving loan for a down payment program. Um, so, uh, Councillor Bisco. So just back to that down payment program, I'm hearing a couple different things that in particular has to do with either houselessness or affordable housing. I'm not sure um, exactly what we're talking about there. And then what the city manager was just talking about was more small business oriented um, economic development. I just wanna make a comment about specifically, well, so there's always support that we can improve for our small businesses just as a general statement. So if we choose to move forward with that, I would definitely advocate for that. When we're talking about a down payment program, number one, you're talking about a completely different level of oversight. Um, you're also uh, like, what does that look like? And where is it that, that all of a sudden that that's the city's job to navigate that space and not our social service providers? Because it seems like with staff that has finite resources asking them to manage a loan program, basically, that's a revolving program. There's a lot of components that would need to be considered for that, which is how do you really decide who gets the grants? I mean, where's the policy for this? I, I know that uh, the information that PCS had worked on with the housing program, there's some of that documentation there. That's nothing that this council or this committee really has looked at or perhaps updated. So I'd be hesitant to send our city off in another direction where we're all of a sudden loan managers and we're having to decide what does equity look like in that space? How do we decide who to fund, who we don't fund, what limits that might look like? It just seems like they're bigger conversations than just a decision we can make this evening on that specific topic. And sure. I would ad advocate more for we do the business of the city and not the business of social services agencies, which we have a fair amount of. To the point of the homelessness conversation, I don't know that this council is fully aware, but the work of the Hope Advisory Board working with Benton County and the city of Corvallis has been going on for just about two and a quarter years now. And a series of 15 recommendations went to that joint um, agreement and the joint county and commissioners, or excuse me, city uh, county commissioners and city councilors. And there's a lot of conversation about that. Uh, League of Oregon Cities also is working on advocating. I don't know if it's happened yet, but the state had set aside $8 million for eight metropolitan areas that had programs that were ready to 
um, be implemented or be stood up and Benton County was one of them on that list. I don't know what the result ultimately has been, but the league is very involved in this conversation as well. And it might be better if we actually join forces with activities that are being recognized on a statewide level and how we can support Benton County's efforts as a whole, because there's quite a network there that supports affordable housing and supportive services in that space. And we might benefit, not only might be able to contribute from that rural perspective and the Philomath perspective, but also would be able to um, benefit from what's actually already being done instead of trying to come up with other alternatives. Community Services Consortium also has a lot of funding options that are coming down from state and county as well, support-wise. And sometimes even federal is trickling down through those systems that very well could take the place of what this type of program, this down payment idea that we're talking about. Uh, at least it seems like a place we should be exploring our options before we start a whole new program that would require more staff resources. And just to uh, and just to mention that we were talking about the idea of partnering with Habitat for Humanity or something like that in order to have a program. But, uh, so. Uh, Spencer Irwin, you had your hand up. You're muted. Uh, it's just when you, uh, when Chris was talking about the range, uh, it did kind of sound like maybe it uh, would fit well with putting a little money in uh, seed money for the skate park project. Uh, it would compartmentalize that and then give us kind of the footing to move forward on seeking other funding and make it smooth. I also like the down payment uh, thing sounds good too, but uh, it, uh, I know that the skate park from my time on the parks for the skate park is a popular thing. So we would be working directly on something that kind of fits that range. You know, I mean, we'd be partway to a mat. If it was like 60, we'd be looking for a match and we could almost get it done. I don't remember the specifics, but we'd be in the ballpark of being able to get it done. So, right. I don't know. And actually, I think both those topics came up as potential things to, uh, during the Finance and Admin Committee uh, for potential projects to apply for from Benton County for. Is that correct, Chris? Yeah, both of those would work. And yeah, to your point, I, th I think the idea would be not to start up our own down payment assistance program, but it would give us the option to, you know, reach out for Habitat for Humanity or a similar that is in the business of helping with down payment assistance or, or housing um, needs. But I, I think Councilor Biscoe makes a good point. Uh, we don't want to you know, gain $30,000 and then spend 20,000 of it in staff time uh, trying to stand up a new program. So I, I think we would be looking to partner um, with a, a nonprofit of sorts that already does this kind of work. And this would just be an additional ask or additional help. You know, the city applying for the funds as opposed to the nonprofit themselves, um, I think shows a little bit of collaboration and partnership, which, which may benefit us in a, in a grant application. So any additional comments or thoughts? <clears throat> Chris Costello, did I see your hand partly go up? No. Um, so should we? Another option, Mayor Jones is you know, I don't know that we're limited to apply for just one. I could do a write up on both uh, seed money for a skate park and also uh, money for a down payment or, or for money towards a skate park. My only concern with the skate park is just a little preliminary. I mean, we've got it in the master plan. We're just now talking about how it would roll into the capital improvement plan. I don't know if the county is going to look that closely at any of that. I think that the park master plan is clear enough of the desire and the need in the community. So I not too concerned about that, um, but I'm not sure with the comments Councilor Bisco made on any type of a houselessness or homelessness effort, if there was a specific item that, that you were referring to Councilor Bisco or, or what your thought was there. 
Um, so I I heard you talking about the skate park. I didn't hear the jump to the houselessness houselessness part. So yeah, so I've got the down payment assistance um, money for a skate park to help us kind of see money. You had made additional comments about homelessness and houselessness, and I wasn't sure what that request would look like. So maybe if you could explain that a little bit more, like what would be you talked about a couple of different programs and efforts, but what would be the city of Flomus application specifically? So it depends on, I guess I would say how much dollars we had access to, but ideally this is a topic that continues to come up and is there a way we can get assistance? So technical assistance, or is there another source of like, what's our policy in Philomath on homelessness? And what's our, what's our forward thinking look on affordable housing? And do we have any do we have any resources on how to build something like that out? So that would be a space where I feel like we have a gap. Um, we don't really have our current uh, social services programs don't really dig into that deep. I think that that we see peripheral support if you're dealing with housing issues, um, whether it's food or other resources, um, clothing in some cases, resources for our children, but we really don't have anything specific in Philomath where somebody can walk into a building and say, hey, I'm living on the street, what resources do I have? And the reality of that situation is that we've got folks in Philomath that can't get necessarily to Corvallis to utilize those resources. So does it look like a build out of some of our current social services to help support that part-time staffing or just resource material so our social services can, can do the lift with a little financial support? It's kind of a bigger conversation than, than just a one-off. But if there's a place to plant some of those dollars in that, not that I want to see us spend a lot of money on planning, but we don't really have a policy to work with. So can we get some resources that will help us develop that type of policy? So when Benton County goes, hey, Philoma, we can go, yeah, we're right on board and we actually know where the city wants to go with this. That would be my recommendation, I think, for any funding request outside of funding specific. I just think liaison closer with our service providers in Benton County as they build out what those services look like, because we're gonna see an extensive amount of money poured into those services and they do benefit Philomath as well. Thank you. And Councilor Kazi. Um, yes, I just wanted to suggest um, the maximum, um, the maximum allocation for these grants is $500,000. So, and I would think that the likelihood of our receiving a grant will probably be um, improved if our ask is specified and, and there's some kind of assessment of how much money we need and how it will be used. And so I would be inclined to focus on areas where um, we've already defined what those costs might be. Um, which, for example, is, is, is the case with uh, the skate park and is the case with the library. So I might suggest um, those or other ideas on our list that are perhaps better defined. Um, you could probably come up with a good description of a revolving down payment fund. Um, and maybe identify a partner to work with, but I would suggest that the ideas that are most well-defined will probably be those most likely funded. Thank you. <clears throat> Does anybody else have comments before Councilor Bisco just wanted to make space for everyone? Councilor Bisco? You are muted. Thank you, Mayor. I was just curious, has anybody actually reached out to Habitat? Like, is that doorway already open? And, and I know that they're working with some of the mill pond changes, um, but from the city, have we actually had that conversation of would they be a partner with the city? Chris? Yeah, I've, I've been an active participant in those conversations with mill pond crossing. So I, that's kind of been a three-way conversation. The city's at this point just been playing host and I've not offered any any funds, but I think there would be an opportunity for a kind of a three-way partnership between Mill Pond Crossing, uh, the townhomes that were just approved recently uh, by the Planning Commission and Habitat for Humanity. It sounds like they're very open and excited about the opportunity to partner to provide some type of 
you know, more affordable housing, so to speak, not to subsidize necessarily, but affordable housing, down payment assistance, I think anything the city could do, uh, sounds like they'd be a willing partner to, to help out with. I don't want to speak for them, but in the meetings that I've been in with them, that's the perception that I've been given. Yeah, could you likewise, just... I, <clears throat> I was chatting with Karen a while back and she also suggested that she was very interested in partnering with the city. So could you just clarify then for me, and I, I too have sat down with her because of serving on that board, um, would we be asking then for grant funds that are specific to the mill pond development or because now it seems like it's going more that direction? Or are we looking at just a general overall support of affordable housing, housing options, housing support? I don't think we'd be able to limit it. Just I don't know that we would want to limit it to just that development. I think we would make it open. Um, to me, in my mind, it's a partnership with Habitat for Humanity for you know, a specific request that they're doing, which would be for that down payment assistance or to help people get into that home. Um, I, don't, I don't think we would want to limit it to a specific neighborhood. And I'll just okay. state that the, the vision has not been developed very much. We just discussed it, you know, tonight and at the finance and admin committee. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah if, the, if the committee wanted to go that direction, you know, I could get a hold of uh, Habitat, you know, this week still have a sit down, see what that could look like. And, and again, work with them to pull a, an application together. So it, it may lack some of the specifics, but again, I think we could get fairly quick on a dollar amount, what that would look like. We could look at some example programs. I think we could put together a fairly strong application there. And again, I think the partner with Habitat is helpful. They're a known entity and, and a well-respected entity in the community. And if they say they're not interested, then we say, okay. Right. Right. Uh, Van? Yes, I, I, I think that sounds like a, a, a reasonable option. Um, I don't know if you apply for the whole 500,000, but I mean, I guess that would be good because you, you know, a down payment, uh, you're not going to be able to stretch that out a, a long, long ways. But working with Habitat, where they've, you know, in our community, they've been here for quite some time, helping other people get into homes. And I guess uh, I would agree like with Chris that, no, I wouldn't want it to be just for Mill Pond. And I, I think it would be, you know, helpful to them helping people get into homes. I don't know how all their rules about everything, but, I guess if it was a, a revolving fund, which, you know, like when you sell your house or something like that and you, you pay the city back, then it could be something that could, you know, kind of refund itself. I mean, it may take a long time when you after you first spend all the money, but um, I, I, I like that idea. So I, I would just be supportive of that. Thank you. And again, I just want to offer others the space to participate if you have anything. Um, otherwise, I'm going to go back to Councilor Bisco and then I would like to wrap up this conversation um, and try to get out of, try to get home to our families and eat some dinner. Um, Councilor Bisco. Thank you, Mayor. So as you were talking about this uh, relatively new um, and very relevant development. So Harriet's housing has either has already been moved to a nonprofit status or will be moved into a nonprofit. I don't know if it's complete yet, um, but it's being reestablished as a nonprofit. Um, Reese Stutzenberg, who has worked with the Hope Advisory Board and also helped with several of the um, transitional housing, I believe is going to be serving on that as the executive director. And this is all public with the Hope Advisory Board as well. So this is no secret. Um, that too is a space where dollars might be beneficial in helping bringing those houses up to, um, you know, just sometimes some of the repairs that are needed for those houses. Um, I know that there's been challenges expressed in the past with some of how those programs have been operated. It's a real opportunity actually to not only invest if we have funds available, but to support that transitional housing space and provide some additional resources and, and it should be within that nonprofit space as well. So those are partner, another partner that maybe should be considering with this ask. Thank you. 
Um, there are just one more. There are 90, 90 some, 90 some units in that program that provide that transitional sort of single unit housing within Philoma. So it's pretty substantial. Thank you. <clears throat> so needing to come to some consensus on an, on this idea, uh, Chris, are you thinking about applying to, for one or two different programs? I, I heard that you might apply for two, is that correct? I'm open to committee's recommendation. I, mean, I think we could ask for for two, you know, maybe three, but I'm I'm a little concerned about standing up three applications. So if we narrow it down to one or two would be my preference. I mean, we could apply for everything, but then your chances of getting anything kind of drop down a little bit. Right. And... Yeah, I'm supportive of the skate park end of this um, idea of a loan program or some sort of partnership with another outside entity. So I've, I guess I've heard just to kind of wrap, I've heard skate park, I've heard a down payment assistance, like a housing assistance uh, for library. And then I've heard um, houselessness efforts and that kind of varied between a, like a technical assistance consultant helping out to kind of help set a plan um, to then just most recently assistance for um, Harriet Hughes housing and I don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the foundation that's been set up, but you're correct. It has been set up as a foundation. Um, so that'd be specific to helping with um, those kind of transitional housing um, rooms. Is there anything that I missed in the discussion here the last 15 minutes? Sounds about right. And if not, maybe we just take a hand count and see if we can get a majority on any of these. <clears throat> Let's start with uh, the skate park. Um, how many people are supportive of applying for the skate park funding? Can, yeah, this is challenging with this kind of hands, but I see the majority. I see a majority, okay. <laughs> and what about a down payment assistance program? Can you raise your hand if you like that idea? Mayor, could you clarify if that's standalone or is that going to be the partnership conversation with Habitat and the new that variance housing? That would be a, a, in partnership with an outside it's, entity. And yeah, I would let Chris reach out to Habitat or whomever. So I'm seeing a majority, yeah, a majority with their hands up. Uh, uh, next, I had the uh, libraries, kind of how I have them on my list anyway. Okay. <clears throat> uh, can I see a raise of hands of people who would like us to apply for library funding? So I'm seeing four-ish, five-ish. Okay, everybody stop raising your hand. Lay your hand. <laughs> Hang on, keep your hands up. And Mayor, can you Wait. again clarify, is that like hang on, we have hang on. to give up one of the first two. <clears throat> Hold on one second. <laughs> so okay, so I see a majority. I well, see I'm eight people with their hands up right now. Um, we might have to vote again. That's fine. <clears throat> so what else? What else do you want input on, Chris? Uh, the houselessness. Um, I think this is specific to having a, what I heard was having somebody come in, a consultant or come in and, and, and or money towards a, a plan or coming up with a program of what our policy would be towards uh, houselessness. Okay. <clears throat> all in favor of that idea, please raise your hand. So are, are we all just sort of gauging the room or like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, yeah. You know, we have to prioritize two out of all of these, so. Okay, but it's okay if we support more than two. Daughter and her kids. Like, I, do we have gonna, Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It'd be best if you didn't. It'd be easier if you did not. With that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to say that that one's not going to be in the final. So, so Mayor. Mayor. Yeah. Please, yeah. I'm hearing some background noise. Yeah, Mayor? Hold on one moment. Um, 
do that. Her son's holding the best out of his bomb. Chris, can you mute? Someone's got something noise in the background. Yeah, and I can't see where it's coming from. Sorry. Okay. Well, I'll mute me. I'm not. Sorry, Councilor Lowe. Yeah, can we just eliminate the library from this discussion? I, I think that that's covered. I have, I'm totally in favor of the library, as people will know by association, but I don't think it's relevant. I'd rather have these other projects be uh, up at the top of the list. Um, <clears throat> but does everybody feel that way? <laughs> That's the problem. <clears throat> yes, I, I, I see Spencer with a thumb up. I see Councillor with this with her fingers up. I can't. Mayor, maybe let's go by process of elimination. Maybe let's take a final vote on the transitional housing uh, recommendation that was made, and then maybe we can come come back to those that kind of had a majority. Okay. And so the question is, <clears throat> people who are in support of the transitional housing idea, putting money towards that, um, please raise your hand uh, that you would like to see that move forward. Can Mayor, you? I'd like to still ask my clarification question if I could, because it does determine my vote. What was your question? I, I'm not, sh I'm unclear that we're, I didn't know we were coaxing out all these different homeless parts into some other space. I would feel that that would be an overall policy where we talk about transitional housing and habitat and that relationship. Are they really gonna be three separate things? I guess where I'm coming from, Councilor Visco, would be I need some direction on what I'm writing the grant for. And so I kind of need, that's what I've kind of tried to tease out a little bit is what is the project that I'd be writing the grant for? And when I asked that, I got about social services, creating a policy, and then also got to talk about transitional housing. And so I just, I just need to know what it is I would be writing the grant for. Okay, and I guess my my recommendation there, just with the conversation we had, is that that would be all inclusive. That we would draft some sort of policy, and how we relate, and you know whether it's an agreement of some kind with Habitat, but also with the new nonprofit that was formerly Harriet's Housing. They kind of all go hand to hand. Okay. So my recommendation is that we include them all together, and you ask a bigger ask that includes policies for Philoma, that's not the word we want to use, that's fine, but some sort of mechanism to move the conversation of affordable housing and homelessness with our local partners, which would be Habitat and former Harriet's Housing. And then we, all those fine details get worked out in the process of that development rather than trying to make those separate conversations. Yeah, and, and if, then, I, if I was a funder, I'd have a hard problem. problem. I'd have a problem funding something so nebulous. Well, so I'm, I guess my question would be, I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I, I intuitively thought that this would be hiring a consultant to come in and kind of look at that and do some interviews and make some recommendations, but I don't want to put words in your mouth. What, I guess, what would the actual money be spent for? Would it be that consultant or would it be some other effort? So I, again, it seems like a holistic process and I would caution us from partnering with Habitat for Humanity and not partnering with Harriet's housing, or at least having that conversation. So nebulous, maybe, but we're asking for a big blank check without any specifics. Anyhow, we haven't talked to Habitat. We don't really know whether or not they're willing to move forward in this space. So we haven't also talked to, talk to former Harriet's housing, and we don't really have any policies for Paloma. So it seems like all of those spaces could benefit from funding. And does it firm up all of those resources? I, like I said, I would hate for us to partner with Habitat and then tell Harriet's Housing that's been doing, you know, that much good for that long of a period of time for that many individuals and or folks that use that space that, well, we just chose to partner with Habitat because we opted not to write it into this grant. So is there a way to capture it all would be my question. I think it's captured in the homelessness transitional housing effort or, or study. I mean, I, I get that. And then I think we just need to see if that's a, a priority and then we can focus on the details a little bit more. But we do have to set a priority, right? Everything can't be a priority or, or you don't have any. <clears throat> Looks like Councilor Kazi has a comment. 
Um, yes, I just wanted to recommend that we focus on um, the revolving loan program with Habitat, um, just because um, I would like to support Harriet's Housing, but I want to be sure that we reach out to them and find out if they are applying for these funds, because I don't want to duplicate and ask that someone else is making So um, this is a very challenging process to do. Well, and, Mayor, let me help you out a little bit. You know, you know, we're putting everybody in a little bit of a tough spot, right? Nobody wants to vote against the library. Nobody wants to vote against affordable housing. So again, that's where I said this could go sideways real quick, right? I, I didn't want that to happen. This is like extra funding that the city would try to apply for. And if we can get it, that's terrific. If not, we've got other funding, we have other efforts, we have other areas in our strategic plan that we're still gonna to continue to move forward on. So, you know, because we don't apply for this specific topic for Benton County funding, uh, their use of these ARPA funds, doesn't mean that the city council, the city budget committee, or you individually don't support the effort, right? So, but at the end of the day tonight, if I'm going to write two grants, it looks like for these funds to Benton County, I do need the plan, the budget committee to give some prioritization. We need to get at least a top two. And again, don't feel guilty. That means you don't support the others. It's just, we, we've got to pick two. Um, and even two, I was kind of thinking one, I'm willing to write a second grant, just knowing that it's tough to narrow it down to the one, but I really do need to down down to, to two without people feeling guilty that we're leaving somebody out in the cold we really need to apply for what we feel would be the strongest applications and the most likely to get funding at this point, knowing that this is due in 11 days. So it sounded like we had a lot of support for the skate park project. Um, I would say probably even more so than um, one of the affordable housing comment or discussions. Um, after all this discussion, can you just raise your hand if you think the city should apply for a, a grant that would support the skate park? Okay, so I'm seeing 11 of us at least um, with our hands up. So that looks like it has a lot of support. And then can you raise your hand if you would like to see a revolving loan program supported? For housing down payment assistance, we should probably for clarify. Revolving, <laughs> yeah, for down, for down payment housing. So that's actually, I would say, only has six-ish timeout. Chris, you're muted. You're muted still. Chris, you're muted. Chris, Costella? You're still muted. Okay. There you go. I think, okay. Yep. So point of clarification, um, it was very easy for me to vote for the skate park. I am a little confused as to what all the balance of the choices are. So the next choice you presented us, and so I don't want to squander my last vote. So can you tell us kind of the category so that I can vote appropriately? Thank you. Sure. It seems to me that we have <clears throat> two or three different options. Chris, how many options are you counting? So I'm at four if we combine the houselessness and the transitional housing into one. Uh, Councillor Lowe had recommended removing library, but there was a at least an eight number majority initially. So I would recommend that we vote on that one again. And again, at 715, I'd recommend everybody gets two votes. Let's vote through those four. We got skate park, uh, revolving loan for uh, down payment assistance, library uh, money, which would go directly towards not only you know, the initial ask for the uh, feasibility study, but 
uh, maybe a larger ask for actually some seed money to help with that effort. And then the fourth would be looking at homelessness and transitional housing, potentially some money that would go towards um, you know, organizations that are doing that work, helping the city establish our policy and what that would look like. Um, so those are the four that I've got. So maybe everybody reserve yourself to two votes and we can go through those with the mayor. Okay. Um, unless anybody has any maybe final comments before we take the vote and then conclude for the evening. And again, I apologize for putting them in a hard spot. These are tough decisions, but, uh, you know, don't feel like you're voting against anything, just that you're voting for things, uh, not against other things. Councilor Bisco, you have another comment? Yeah, just real quick. I, I think that the houselessness and the transitional housing does need to include engagement with Habitat. Um, and I'm not sure that I heard that in, in what city manager just said. I will only share this perspective. I don't disagree with the rotating down payment idea or any of that, but I do think that we have not asked yet and Habitat not only has to answer to their local charter, they also have to answer to a national charter to some extent. We're not bankers here and we don't even know if that's an option that's viable. I would like to see that embedded with the other houselessness conversation because I think it has real merit. I just don't, know that we have enough information to vote to support a grant specific to that without knowing that we have a place to land that grant. Right, thank you. <clears throat> so, um, and uh, yeah, and I don't disagree with you. We still are, yeah, that vision is not well developed. So it's entirely possible it would be funded anyway. Um, so <clears throat> you get two votes, uh, Councilor Lowe. Council Lowe? No, okay. So you get two votes um, and we're gonna kind of move through these, hopefully rather quickly. <clears throat> First of all, the library. Please raise your hand if you're in support of applying for a grant to support the library. Okay, I see two hands up. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. Um, if you are in support of applying for a grant to support the skate park, please raise your hand and say. Okay. So I see at least 10 people with their hands up, 11 people with their hands up. Okay. And then um, if you are in support of a revolving down payment loan assist, or a revolving loan down payment assistance program. Uh, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that one is not going to move forward. And then a more comprehensive, um, <clears throat> developing a policy, more comprehensive policy around homelessness and affordable housing. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight votes there, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so that one, I, that one will be moving forward as well. And then was there one last one, Chris, or is that it? Uh, no, I think I've got what I need. So I'll Great. prepare two grants, one for skate park and, uh, and one for kind of the homelessness, transitional housing, working with Habitat, kind of all encompassing for this essentially a homelessness housing policy for the city. Great, thank you. So with that, that was a lot of hard work, everyone. I really do appreciate all of your time. I know it's getting late and we've been at this for an hour, a while. So uh, please go home and eat some dinner, love your families and uh, have a wonderful evening, but we're adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you in a